Hello everybody, welcome back. We have a fairly quick lesson, at least compared to our other lessons today, but I think it's a really important topic. We're going to be talking about buprenorphine and what's commonly called the X waiver. Um, the X waiver is basically a way that prescribers can prescribe buprenorphine. So we're going to dig into the details here. As always, in the comment section, there is a link to the PDF of the outline that's got uh, all the details and it also has all of our references, all of our peer-reviewed references. All right, so let's start talking about buprenorphine. Buprenorphine. This is one of the words where I have to focus in order to spell it right, because if I don't focus, I guarantee I'll miss a letter or add a letter. Buprenorphine. So it's becoming more and more popular these days as a, a, a part of a medication-assisted treatment protocol, or MAT. So medication-assisted treatment is a way of treating opioid use disorder, or OUD. Uh, and, and there's a lot of different ways that people think to treat opioid use disorder, but one of the ways is with medications. And this is actually proving to be um, very, very effective. There's a lot of mixed opinions on this, but the data really supports the use of MAT. So the way it works, buprenorphine is a partial opioid agonist. Partial, and we're going to talk about um, basically the mu opioid agonism because that we care about a lot. So it's a partial mu opioid agonist, mu opioid receptor agonist, which basically means that it'll cause some of the effects as our traditional opioid agonists, think morphine, fentanyl, heroin, uh, whatever else you want to think about, but it doesn't cause all of the effects. It has what we call a ceiling effect. So what really matters here is that it can satisfy opioid cravings and it can even have some analgesic effects, but it doesn't have as many of the side effects as a full agonist. So it doesn't have nearly as much respiratory depression and it doesn't cause as much altered mental status. So study after study after study has shown that buprenorphine is very safe, especially compared to the full opioid agonists. Uh, and this is kind of, it, it's similar to methadone it's used in similar settings as methadone but methadone is a full opioid agonist and so buprenorphine many people think it's it's a safer alternative regardless like i said it's becoming much more popular there's a lot of data to support its use so we'll see where it goes uh, it's very often mixed with naloxone uh, and there's a lot of different ratios the most common is like a one to four buprenorphine to naloxone and when you have this mixture it's marketed in the United States as Suboxone. So sometimes you kind of hear these used interchangeably. Um, technically, Suboxone is not straight buprenorphine, it's buprenorphine with naloxone, but they're used in very similar settings. Um, the only difference is that Suboxone, the mixture with naloxone, has a little bit more um, resistance to abuse. It's, it's harder to abuse Suboxone than it is straight buprenorphine. So let's real quickly talk about opioid use disorder in the United States. Um, right now, and actually this data is a couple years old, but they estimate approximately 2.4 million Americans have opioid use disorder or are diagnosed with opioid use disorder. Um, despite that, though, less than half of them receive medication-assisted therapy. We'll say get MAT. So less than half of these 2.4 million Americans are receiving any sort of pharmacologic intervention for their opioid use disorder, which again, there's a lot of stigma, there's a lot of different opinions, but the data really strongly suggests that MAT is one of the most effective treatments we have against OUD. So here's where it gets a little bit tricky. Let's see if this color shows up well. Yeah, I think that's fine. Prescribing buprenorphine can be a little bit complicated. Sorry. Like I said, I gotta focus on this word or else I'll misspell it. Prescribing buprenorphine can be a little bit complicated um, because essentially there's some limits on how a, a physician without any additional training or a, a prescriber without any additional training is allowed to prescribe. So if you want to use buprenorphine to treat OUD, you have to have a waiver. Now the technical name for this waiver is the DATA2000 waiver. And that comes from the drug Abuse Treatment Act of 2000, which basically says any prescriber who wants to treat OUD with buprenorphine has to go through some additional training, get an additional license or a waiver to prescribe. However, this is most commonly referred to as the X waiver. And the reason it's called that is because after you get the waiver, you get another DEA license number that has an X in front of it and then your normal license number after it. Uh, so people call this the X waiver, and you'll hear it called that much more often than you'll hear anyone talk about a Data 2000 waiver. 
And like we said, it requires some additional training to get this. Fortunately, the training's pretty easy and it's for free, it's online, and it's offered by several different resources. So you can kind of take your pick of which organization you want to train you, but uh, it's relatively easy. So let me make a new slide here. We'll kind of go over the details of the training. The X waiver training. So for uh, it's it's available to a number of different prescribers. Specifically, it's available to physicians. So we'll say MDs and DOs. It's available to nurse practitioners. It's available to physician assistants. It is available to clinical nurse specialists. It's available to certified registered nurse anesthetists. And finally, to certified nurse midwives. So these are the, uh, the categories that are currently uh, people who are able to get an X waiver. If you don't fall into these categories, you cannot legally get an X waiver at this time. Uh, and the training is similar for all these groups, but a little bit different. So first I'll talk about the uh, requirements for a physician. So physician X waiver training or requirements. It's an eight hour class. Like I said, the class is offered online in kind of a distributed learning format. Um, so I went and did it and you can kind of stop and break and you know go to the bathroom or go get food or, or save part until the next day. So it's, it's very easy in terms of your schedule. It's not like a live webinar where you have to be there at a certain time on a certain date. So you can sign up and you can do it all in one sitting or you can stretch it out over a couple days or a week or whatever suits you. It is all online. Although I do believe they have some in-person options. I'm not 100% sure, but I've heard people say that, you know, say you have a hospital or an organization that wants to do this on a mass scale. I believe there's a way to have someone come and do it. But for the individual, you can take it online. It is offered free of cost, um, which is a huge bonus. And there are multiple different sources uh, to get this training from. So kind of the, the big one, and this is the one that is generally recommended by SAMHSA, that's the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration of the government. That's the, the organization that oversees the entire X wavering process. They generally recommend, or, or you'll hear it on their website, they'll refer to the Provider Clinical Support System, PCSS. So they offer the class online, but there are a number of other ones, including the American Association of Addiction Psychiatry, the American Society of Addiction Medicine, and many more training uh, that are all authorized by SAMHSA to give this class. All right, so I'm going to use the eraser here and talk about just kind of the differences for these other level providers because it's actually pretty basic. There's only one main difference. So we'll talk about, uh, we'll just say mid-level providers. The only difference is that for anyone who's not an MD or a DO, they have to have 24 hours of training instead of eight. Um, again, there are a number of sources that all offer this training for free online in a distributive capacity. Um, and a lot of the kind of governing bodies for those different organizations, for the NPs, for the PAs, a lot of them have their own version of this class that meets a 24-hour requirement. So that's the only difference uh, for the non-physicians. There's a, a few extra hours of training, 16 to be specific. All right, so let's talk about actually getting the X waiver. We've done the training. We've passed the test. We've gotten the uh, certificate. How do we actually get that special DEA license, the X waiver. So uh, it's actually pretty simple. Once you take the training and you get your certificate of completion, you're gonna go to the uh, SAMHSA website. And uh, we'll put a link in the description for the video. You just go to the website and, and there's a pretty simple online form there. Um, now, once you get it, there are a few stipulations. So let's talk about after, kind of the things that you have to do. So uh, one is you're limited to treating no more than 100 patients in the first year. I'll say year one. It used to be 30 patients, but they uh, recently increased that number to 100. After the first year, if you find that uh, you're treating or you want to treat more than 100 patients, you can submit a, a request to increase that number to 275 patients. So this is uh, after you submit a request and of course after one year they also stipulate that uh, you have to do any sort of MAT prescribing in what they call a qualified practice setting 
Uh, and they have the exact definition of this, but essentially what it boils down to is you can't prescribe buprenorphine from your garage. So you have to be in a qualified practice setting. And finally, the last resource, and this is actually, I think, a really um, under underappreciated resource, but that website, the PCCS, which is the Providers Clinical Support System, this is kind of the one that's officially endorsed by SAMHSA, has um, basically a mentorship program where you can be connected to a network of addiction specialists, clinical addiction specialists, and you can ask questions and they can kind of share best practices and evidence with you to make sure that uh, you're doing this the way that's intended and the way it's going to help patients the most. So that's all I got for the X waiver video. It's like I said, pretty straightforward process. A lot of people, um, you know, really wonder about this, but it's kind of confusing until you actually open it up and read through the the guidelines. And then it's actually pretty simple. So hopefully this helps some people. Like I said, we're going to be going to have a lot of links in the video description, including the PCCS training website and the uh, the SAMHSA link to apply for your X waiver once you finish the training. If you have any feedback, comments, questions, anything like that, please leave them in the comments. I look forward to speaking with everyone. Bye bye.